I'm with Dr. Vandana Shiva, a fellow physicist. Now, uh, you, I went into computers and you went into the biology world and life sciences and farming and all that. How come that turn? Tell us your involvement in this whole thing which led to the field called ecofeminism. You created a field called ecofeminism which the western feminists think is theirs. So tell us that story. Um, Rajiv, yes, uh, I think you and I went into physics trying to understand the foundations of how nature works, how the laws of nature work. And for, I did my MSc honours in particle physics from Punjab University, which is why Punjab is very close to my heart. Um, in the process, the mechanistic understanding of the universe, of course, stood in crumbles. It just didn't explain the world. And the quantum world became more and more alive. And I decided to do a PhD on the foundations of quantum theory, for which I was going to Canada, which had attracted the top minds looking at quantum theory. And they had a colloquium on quantum theory for five years, the five years I was in Canada. But before leaving, I wanted to carry my best memories with me. So I went off on a trek. My father had been a forest conservator. I had grown up in the mountain forest of the Himalaya in Garhwal. I was born there. So I said, I'll trek and I'll swim and then I'll go off and slog on quantum theory. And I go to walk in this oak forest, which is no more an oak forest, it's been chopped down for an apple orchard in an area where apples never really grew. So you don't hear of Chamba apples. You hear of Himachali apples and you hear of Kashmir apples. And of course the dumping of Washington apples. And the stream was a trickle. A stream in which one could swim was now just up to my ankles. So on the way back, I stopped at the Dhaba, waiting for the bus to bring me back to Delhi. And I talked about how this, these forests and rivers that I took for granted were being destroyed. And this Dhaba wala, chai wala, making a nice chai for me, says, but now there's hope, Chipko has started. I said, what on earth is that? And he said, women are coming out now to say we're going to hug the trees and we won't let you cut them and you'll have to kill us before you kill the tree. I was going off for a PhD, but I took a pledge in my heart. Every vacation, winter, summer, I'm going to come back and volunteer for Chipko. I did that from the early 70s throughout eight, up to 81 when we got a logging ban. And I used to be the scribe for the movement. I used to be the documenter of the movement. And I always say, I joke sometimes, I say, you know, with the hierarchy of knowledges, that has been created very artificially. If you're a peasant woman, your knowledge doesn't count. If you speak in Garhwali, it doesn't count. If you speak in Hindi, it doesn't count. But the minute you do English and the minute you make a graph, suddenly that digested knowledge. English is a digestion mechanism. Exactly. It's the stomach into which yeah. you digest. So I used to put all the knowledge of the women into English reports and graphs. And that's how we managed to get a logging ban. It was the first victory of the contemporary ecology movement. I was asked in 1985 to speak at the UN Conference of Women in Nairobi. And in those days, there was just me and Wangari Mathai of Kenya, who were talking about women and the environment. I gave this talk and Ritu Menon, a publisher who had started Kali for Women in uh, India, said, you've got to write a book on that. No one's talking about these interconnections. I said, I gave up my university professorships. I don't publish books. I don't do anything like that. Now I'm going to serve nature and society. She says, but writing can be a subversive activity, Vandana. Writing can be a, a subversive, subversive activity. Act and that's how this book, Staying Alive, came to be. And it redefined what development is. It redefined what the status of women and role of women is. And it totally redefined the trajectory of how we think in terms of the dominant Western patriarchal model. When they colonize, they call it development. Women don't work, women aren't creative. I had learned a lot of this in the field from the women communities. But this then became the basis of my other collaborations. Then I wrote a book with the, the publisher in England, said, your book is a classic for the South. Maria Mies had done a classic called Patriarch, Capitalist Patriarchy on a World Scale. So why don't two of you collaborate to do a book on your philosophy, a common philosophy of ecofeminism? So we wrote a book called Ecofeminism. And it was interesting. The trends were absolutely the same. 
So, but in the West, Christianity doesn't have feminism. I mean, Christianity has subdued feminism. It's a patriarchal. I mean, in fact, many of the problems of uh, Western masculinity, capitalism come out of the Bible because it's a male dominated thing. The constructed Bible. Constructed Bible. Because if you go to Florence yes. or go to ancient Greece, Mary is everywhere. Yes. She was expelled. So it was a bull that was issued that basically redefined it as a patriarchal institution. And in a way, there's a convergence between having Christianity become a servant of the money machine, I call it, capitalism, and therefore having to crush the part of humanity that encourages care, that encourages compassion that encourages the recognition of life. So the eco-feminism movement, uh, the, the feminism movement in the 60s, I mean yes. I'm talking about more recently, yeah. came out of things like uh, revolt against Vietnam War and those, the, the, the things that were happening after World War II. Yes. Uh, but there was a, uh, suddenly there was a flashback to the past, reconnecting with earlier societies and you brought in the Vedic ideas of feminism and eco-feminism into the conversation. Well, we are a land of Shakti. We mustn't forget it. Yes. Our entire cosmology is based on Shakti. Yes. The feminine principle is the creative principle. So how did this principle get become part of the Western conversation, the whole Vedic principle of eco-feminism? Because you know what happened, another thing that happened is in the field of religious studies, a uh, lot of women kind of revolted because they felt that we need feminine ideas, we need more feminism, in, in the, we need the goddess and things like that. So a lot of people, a lot of women, Western women, uh, started looking at Hindu goddess as a kind of a role model to uh, bring into their, into their lives. And uh, in fact, a movement started to endow Mary with these kind of things. A lot of, uh, you know, Mary as a goddess is still a contested topic within Christianity. I mean, there is the Protestants who don't want it. Catholics are a little more friendly towards this idea of uh, Mary as a kind of, a, with, with her own, uh, you know, she's not part of the Trinity. So bringing Mary into the, uh, into not just sort of Jesus' mother, but as sort of uh, the, the, the supreme person herself. Uh, there is a kind of a movement, but there's a pushback from yeah. Christian theologians that don't want this. So there is that kind of a thing that happened. Something happened in the 60s, 70s with a large influx of in Hindu thought because uh, suddenly Western women in religious studies start getting interested in the Hindu goddess. Yeah, I think what's basically happened is that the very violent constructions of the last 500 years with colonialism and the last 200 years of industrialism about which Gandhi wrote so much have now had a reaction. On the one hand we've got fossil fuel dependence, we've got all of the redefinition of creativity, productivity on the basis of are you a fossil fuel civilization or not. You've got climate change, you've got the species extinction, the sixth mass extinction are realizing that that was a very artificial thought process it, and it was imposed violently. Women themselves are understanding we were declared as not having mind. I remember I gave a 100 year talk or 150 year talk at one of the Western Massachusetts colleges which is a women's college and I like to go into the archives of institutions to prepare myself you know and the debates in the founding of this institution were if girls go to college because we are a machine then the brain will grow bigger and if the brain grows bigger then the uterus will shrink and their mother bearing their their child bearing capacities will go down that's how mechanistic the whole world view had become what ecofeminism has basically done is overcome three apartheids the first apartheid is that we are separate from nature. In our philosophy, we knew we are part of nature. Yes. We've always talked about Vasudeva Kutumkam right. being one earth family. And that's why even today, I'm organizing conferences that if you have to build an ecological civilization, you've got to go to the roots of the idea of the earth as one family. And what I try and do is connect the deepest of our spirituality with the cutting edge ecological science, which is all about interconnectedness. Right. And I think the three breakthroughs with the overcoming of apartheids 
apartheid between men and women that women are less women are uh, first is separation with nature, nature. second is gender it, separation the hierarchy but an hierarchy, the hierarchy. So you, but the point is what the western reductionist mechanistic patriarchal thought has done is take what were horizontal relationships right. of difference right men are not women right 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 a brown skin is not a white skin right but there's no hierarchy. But it's not in hierarchy because we live diversity. Right. And for us, diversity doesn't have get measured by one measure. Right. But it is recognized for its intrinsic worth. Right. Therefore, we talk about everyone having their own swadharma. Right. Defined from within. Right. The third was the big, uh, with the nature and thing, was the big separation between those who create through work, the peasant. Those who run the capital. Who's, who are stealers and nothing more. After all, even the word capital is a construct. It right. isn't earlier, it, it means the head of capital, right. of ca cattle. Right. Capital is derived from kaput, which means the head of cattle. Okay, yeah, you're, you have a larger herd of animals, you are a richer man. Right. But this capital is you create fictitious money and look at the situation we are in, Rajiv, you know it better than me. We are in the heart of the beast where five men are controlling half the economy. The billionaires write new rules by the day. Overnight, Jeff Bezos can take over the Indian market and become the richest man and admits that India made him the richest man with the Diwali sales of last year. Now, if we are allowing that kind of new colonization, we go to go deep yeah. in a decolonization. So the first is the separation from nature. No, we are one earth family. Men and women are different, but not unequal. Right. And they're related and they're mutually supported. And that's why we have an Artha Naharishwar. Right. The complementarity principle of Wonderful. quantum theory. And the third is we have to create the society that Gandhi and Vivekananda dreamed of. Vivekananda said that till India is ruled by the Dalit, which means the worker, and Gandhi said till we bring bread labor to the center of the economy, we will never have justice and respect for human beings. So the Vedic lifestyle economy society, if you will, uh, has been um, kind of uh, destroyed or undermined by three things. Uh, one is the separation from nature. Second is this artificial uh, hierarchy of men and women. And the third is the means of production being owned by a few people rather than the many who are doing the actual work. And the ones who don't work, uh, Gandhi had a beautiful thing. Uh, one of the seven sins he talked about is wealth without work. Wealth without work. So all you rich guys who inherited lots of money, you, you, your yagna is to give back. Yes. That right. is the the law of return. The law of return is what we call yagna. Yeah. That is the law of return. Yes. Another episode is coming to take the story forward. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here and also hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified. To donate, please click this button.